I am Oscar Gershanik. I am a professor of neurology in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I have been in the field of Parkinson's disease clinical practice and research for the last 40 years and I have set up a movement disorders unit in our institution in Buenos Aires and also a basic research lab at the University of Buenos Aires. I had the fortune to be trained by some of the top leaders in Parkinson's disease at that time early on in my career, Melvin Yard in New York and Roger Duwazen in the University of New Jersey. And when I got back to Argentina, I was able to organize the first Parkinson's disease and movement disorders unit in Latin America. Ever since, I've been working very hard, both in clinical practice and basic research. And one of the topics of interest, and I have been invited here in a double capacity as president of the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society to talk in the leadership forum and also to talk to patients and to clinicians and scientists about the very problematic uh, phenomenon of dyskinesia in Parkinson's disease. The term dyskinesia means altered or disturbed movement and this is a peculiar type of abnormal involuntary movement that can appear in the course of treatment with levodopa in Parkinsonian patients. It is estimated that about 50% of the patients develop dyskinesia after five years of treatment, 75, around 75 at 15 years, and almost every single patient will have dyskinesia after 20 years of treatment. One of the mysteries is what are the underlying causes of dyskinesia, and there are many factors involved. First of all, the disease itself causes an imbalance in the circuits in the brain that regulate and control movement. So we start with an intrinsic imbalance of the brain that cannot be restored by the medication. Why can it cannot be restored by the medication? By two factors. First of all, there are not enough cells to metabolize levodopa and transform it into dopamine. So these levodopa, instead of going into dopamine-containing cells, it goes into serotonin-containing cells, and it is liberated without control into the brain. The other factor is that levodopa, the way to, we replace dopamine in the brain, it's not a very good way. And it's not a very good way because it's a short-acting compound, and it cannot maintain stable levels of dopamine in the brain, and it's constantly oscillating. And these oscillations of dopamine in the brain lead to several changes, biochemical changes inside the cells, molecular cascades are activated, and there is even changes at the level of the structure of the synapse, the connection between cells. Uh, whenever we uh, cause a lesion that reproduces the lesion that is present in Parkinson's disease, the cells start to transform and change the way they connect between each other. And when we add levodopa, there is a further change which is abnormal in itself. So these are the main components of the mechanism of action towards the development of dyskinesia. What about preventing dyskinesia? Is there any way that we can prevent dyskinesia? There are many ways, but I believe the major the major ways to prevent dyskinesia is first, administer levodopa at the lowest necessary dose. And the second one, try to be strictly adherent to very strict intervals between doses. <coughs> the duration of effective levodopa uh, doesn't go beyond three and a half to four hours. So you have to be very strict in given levodopa every four hours during the waking day. This is one way of preventing, and to give it at the lowest possible dose. In young patients who are particularly prone to the development of dyskinesia, one of the strategies is to postpone the introduction of levodopa, and we have other less potent drugs that we can use in the meantime until it becomes necessary to use levodopa. One of the important things is that there is a lot of research going on trying to unravel the intricacies underlying the development of dyskinesia. And this is done, fortunately, in many labs all over the world, including ourselves, who are working for the last 10 years 
in the field of dyskinesia development. And what are we studying? We have known for many years that one of the, or the only drug that we have available for the treatment of dyskinesia is amantadine. And amantadine is a drug that works but by blocking glutamate receptors. These are receptors for a chemical substance in the brain that is called glutamate. So glutamate is a target and we have been studying the way the cells that liberate glutamate are regulated and how can we modify this uh, upregulation of the glutamate cells. The other factor, and I mentioned this before, is that levodopa is taken up by serotonin cells and liberated in an unregulated fashion. So we are also studying the participation of serotonin cells in the development of dyskinesia. We are also studying intrinsic cells in the basal ganglia, which is the main sector of the brain that is affected by Parkinson's disease that are called cholinergic cells. Because we know that cholinergic cells are intrinsic regulators of the dopaminergic stimulation of the basal ganglia. So these different areas of the brain have been the target of many studies trying to identify what we call targets for therapeutic intervention. These are molecules or chemical substances or cells or mechanisms that we can interfere with and in that way try to uh, block the appearance of this kinesia. In that sense, there are many drugs that are being developed that try to block the effects of the glutamatergic cells. There are many drugs that are trying to interfere with the serotonin uh, mechanism. Other uh, attempts at regulating cholinergic cells and even in trying to regulate some of the intrinsic molecular mechanisms inside the cells, either by uh, drugs or by genetic manipulation. The other way in which we're working towards uh, trying to reduce the impact of dyskinesia in our patients is trying to improve the delivery of levodopa. Why is this important? Because in physiological conditions in the normal brain, dopamine is liberated on a steady state the whole 24 hours a day. And we cannot reproduce that with orally administered levodopa. So there are many pharmaceutical companies that are trying to develop new formulations of levodopa that are absorbed more rapidly, that reach a peak in a more timely fashion, that reach a steady state in a better way and have a more prolonged uh, mechanism of action. So as you can see, uh, there is a lot of research going on in the field of dyskinesia and we're hopeful that we will have something to treat our patients in the near future.